Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. It is SCC Form 1K time. So Aptera has filed their 2023 Form 1K. Um, it was filed on April 2nd, 2024. That's actually like three weeks or two weeks earlier than it was filed last year. So it's a, you know, people have been, I've, I've been hearing some comments that they're being slow about releasing it, but it's actually a little bit earlier than it was last year. Now, before I go into this, I am not a financial professional. This is not financial advice. Um, those of you guys who have been watching my channel for a long time, you know that I have a horrendous track record of picking stocks. Um, I don't have any expertise in reading these uh, statements or anything. I'm just a lay person reading these statements and um, uh, we're gonna just go through it together. So I thought the best way to look at this uh, would be to compare it to last year's Form 1K. So the, here's last year's and here's this year's. All right, so then we're going to go through here. Um, you know, this is just their uh, CYA of uh, cautionary states statement regarding forward-looking statements. Nothing new here. Um, this is the part where I noticed some changes in their business part here. So if you look here, uh, you see the same cautionary statement. Here's the business. Now you'll notice here, um, they have a lot more things to talk about in this year's statement. So they said, um, they talk about these milestones. They've substantially completed production intent vehicle design, uh, established a network of suppliers for capital equipment and bill of materials, built five drivable prototypes, conducted validation and durability testing on production parts to confirm the reliability of our design, implemented ERP and MES systems, We've talked about those, created a robust intellectual prop property portfolio, amassed over 45,000 vehicle reservations and raised over $120 million in funding. So none of that is talked about in the previous uh, statement. And then uh, we believe that our different processes, we can do this. So these are their advantages. Um, so they, this is the same thing. They're talking about how they have simple tooling and less parts, fewer robots, no welding. Um, and so eliminating 95% of the painting process. So that's what they're talking about. And then they talk about their product, which is no different than what they talked about last year. Distribution plan does not change. And then this is what they were talking about their market. Okay, now let's look at suppliers. This is another thing that I saw a change in. So they mention um, Cherry and Alafe here and uh, Cherry and Alafe here, but they talk about here, in addition, we've entered into non-binding agreements with Yazaki. That's their, you know, the, the wiring harness, um, CPC, CTNS. So these are things we all know about. And then they believe their in environmental impact will be good. And so they, that's, that's no different competition so they're they're saying we we have a lot of competition um and so uh here's here's a, the other big change right here if you look at um employees and consultants so at the end of last year they had 55 full-time employees at the end of 2023 31 full-time employees so you know we know that they have been um decreasing their staffing um, a lot of their engineering staff um, have left for other companies and I've been kind of following a lot of them. Luckily, they're they're all doing well and it uh, seems like they all found good jobs. Um, they're at like Northrop Grumman, Lucid. Um, um, one of them is at, oh, what is the name of the company? There's a cool company up in the Bay Area that makes these delivery drones. Um, pretty awesome. Uh, they're, uh, they, they, deliver medical supplies in Rwanda, which is pretty cool. Um, but anyway, so they've decreased their engineering component because I think a lot of their vehicle design is done. And as we know, um, you know, Janie Burlingsgame, their CFOs uh, left. And recently Sarah Hardwick, their chief marketing officer has went off to start their own company. But this is basically their way of um, trying to stay lean and reduce capital expenditure. So they have 31 full-time employees they don't give um, uh, they don't give any pensions or annuity or profit sharing. Well, they don't have any profit to share at this point, um, but they do give them stock options and stuff. So that's what they're doing. Um, what the other thing that we've noticed is, see, they talk about intellectual property. And in 2023, they have been granted two design patents. 
now they've designed they have those two design patents and in this year they got two utility patents and they lay out their patent portfolio in this in this filing see before they didn't really talk about it but in 2023 they talk about these are their uh, patented uh, the ones that they got patents on the three old vehicle and the solar panel layout so these are their two design patents and the utility patents are uh, of a plant providing continuous process for making laminate solar panels and uh, the aerodynamic heat exchanger for a vehicle so this is the belly cooling which uh, isn't going to make it um, on the launch edition mainly because of tooling costs i think the engineering works but the uh, implementation is costly and getting the tooling to make it is going to cost a lot and they're trying to become uh, they're trying to get that thing to production so i think they're going to they're putting that on the back burner for now and these are the the patents that are they've applied for so quite a few a lot um and uh, then they're talking about their space uh, nothing new there operating expenses all right so here's here's uh let's get down to their financials okay so we're going to scroll down um they're talking about here other income other income was 2.1 million dollars for the year ended december 30 which consisted of 1.2 million dollars of grant funding from the california energy commission uh 0.5 million for investment income um for cash held in money market funds and a 0.4 million dollar gain on the settlement of their vista building lease liability so basically you know they offloaded their vista building lease so that made them about a half a million dollars um, they got half a million dollars just from interest on the cash they held and they've received about 1.2 million of grant funding from the cec now uh the cc is remember that uh that grant was like you pay money they like match they match funds so um, as they spend more money, they're going to get more money from the uh, CEC. So that, that's good. Um, they talk about how they they acquired Andromeda and then they basically sold Andromeda back. It was kind of a wash. I think they basically, there was a, it was a friendly merger and this uh, dissolution of the merger. No one, no one came out on top or bottom. It was just kind of like an annulment of a, of a marriage, essentially. All right. Um, this is kind of the most important part here. As of December 31st, 2023, they had uh, 37.6 million in total assets and 17 million in cash. So, um, you know, if, if when, a, when a startup runs out of cash, that's when they kind of go belly up. And so having less cash year on year is a bad thing. Um, oops, I think this is a typo. Uh, because I think this is supposed to be as of December 3rd, 2023, they had this. All right. So um, we, you'll, we'll see it better when we, when we get to the part um, where they have their financial numbers here. All right. So this is talking about their directors and officers. Uh, Chris Anthony, Steve Ambrose, Sarah Hardwick, Chief Marketing Officers. They still list her. Uh, the term of office was this, but she had she had backed down to um, part time a while back, I think. So she's been kind of part time for a while for a while. And then we see that the directors are Chris, Steve, Doug, Louie and Brian Snow. Brian Snow uh, left in August of 2023. Uh, interestingly, they're all about the same age. And uh, they're talking about their officers here. Okay, and then this is talking about um, how much they, they're getting paid. So um, Steve and Chris are making about 230. Um, and then Brian Snow got it like 89,000, but then, you know, I think he was only there part of the time. So he's no longer with the company. So that's what he got. And then this is the class A shares. These are the only voting shares. And as you can see between um, Chris and Steve, those are the executive officers, directors. They control 50.1%, 50.09% of the voting stock. So as long as the two are in agreement, no one can outvote them. Okay. Um, the other people that are um, have Class A stock is Michael Johnson Properties. Well, I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Johnson. Real nice guy. Um, he was at the uh, fully charged event. Um, and then Patrick Quilter Trust. Patrick Quilter um 
they make those amplifiers and stuff. They they are kind of a sound. Uh, they had a business making like amplifiers and and speakers and that kind of stuff. But uh, they own about ten percent of that. So these were the early investors in Aptera, like very very early on. Patrick Culture Trust and Michael Johnson. They kind of they gave them the money to restart this in, in two thousand nineteen. Okay, so here we are at the financials, and so you see here. 2022 um cash and cash equivalents at the end of 2022 they had about 10,000 and at the end of 2023 they have 17,000 so they have more cash now than they did at the end of the previous year so that's a good sign they have more cash now. but we know that a lot of this it was the accelerator program which was very successful for them and that's what kind of funded them through 2023 um, it will be interesting to see what happens in 2024 because there's no longer the accelerator program. Crowdfunding has slowed down. They are going to have to find some big funders. And I think this whole um, uh, Drift X and everything, these and, and they have some things going on in Italy and Europe. They have to find other funding because um, this is the lifeblood of the company is to have cash on hand. They have to pay, make payroll. They have to buy supplies, that kind of stuff. Okay, so if you look at this, um, um, if you look at, uh, let's see, let's go down to expenses. This is the other important thing, is um, if you look at the total operating expenses, so what you see is that their general selling and administrative expenses have gone up from the previous year, but the research and development costs have gone down. And that's because they're having to pay less um, engineers and stuff because they're not doing much development because now most of that is done. And so if you look at their total operating expenses for last year, it was 56,000 and before it was, uh, uh, sorry, 56 million. Before that, it was 61 million. So if you divide this by 12, here, let me get my calculator out and I'm going to do the calculations. So 56 divided by 12. Okay, they have a cash burn rate on average last year of $4.7 million per month. So at that rate, if they stop raising money, um, they're going to be out of money in about four months. Okay, so in about, they have about four months of cash on hand if they stop raising money at their current burn rate. So their burn rate at in 2023 was 4.7. Now their burn rate in 2024 is going to be slightly less. They've 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 um, reduced their staffing some more, and so their burn rate's probably a little bit less even now. But anyways, that's uh, it's a good thing that you see the burn rate going down. I guess in some ways you can think of it as a good thing because the less burn rate is good. But then also you expect when they ramp up for manufacturing, their their costs are going to go up. But that's kind of a good sign because they're ramping up for manufacturing. So kind of a double-edged sword there. Okay, I think that was most of the, the things that we are uh, talking about. Okay, here's an interesting thing that wasn't in the previous thing. It says, in September 2023, the company established a subsidiary company uh aptera motors italia srl based in modena italy so that's the new thing now as you can see that is a subsidiary so if that company uh in uh italy does well shareholders in aptera are going to benefit because it's a subsidiary company all right um so this is their going concern and management plans we have incurred losses from operation since inception obviously uh because they're not they don't have any revenue and everything else is a loss because they're spending money and therefore require financing external forces to continue as a going concern. We will incur significant costs to develop, design, and manufacture vehicles before we are able to generate revenue and therefore expect to continue to include incur losses from operations for the foreseeable future. Okay, this raises substantial doubt of, of our ability to continue as a going concern. During the next 12 months, we plan to fund our operations Okay, so this is their plan. They plan to fund it with current cash reserves, sales of common stock through Regulation A common offering, and additional debt or equity financing as necessary. There are no assurances that we will be able to raise capital on terms acceptable to us. If we are unable to obtain enough capital, we may be required to reduce the scope of our development plans, which would harm our business. 
financial condition, and operating results. The potential impact of these uncertainties are not reflected in the accompanying financial statements. Okay, um, that seems pretty boilerplate. Alrighty, I think. Okay, let me see here. Yeah, that that was pretty much the highlights of it. Let me scroll through here and see if there's anything else that I remember as being important. Uh, no, I think that pretty much covers it. All right, I'm just I'm just gonna get through the very end. Bear with me. I know a lot of you guys don't like this rapid scrolling thing. Okay, so it's it does say here that they accelerate the vesting of 4.6 million uh, stock options for the employees and directors and consultants. Okay, so that's, I'm not sure why they accelerated that. Maybe that was a way to um, retain staff and, and compensate them. Um, uh, in, in lieu of like not having to pay as much cash because saving cash is better. Okay, I think that was it. Let me know if you guys, um, uh, you can find this by just Googling Aptera SEC. It's pretty easy to find. Um, let me know if uh, you guys noticed anything else in these, uh, in this uh, Form 1K. If um, In the comments below, we'll all learn from each other. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.